Welcome back. This area behind me is going to be our new garden area. We finished with the deer fencing yesterday, and today I want to start putting in an area to plant. And, you know, for the last couple of years, you haven't seen me use one of my favorite tools very much at all. One of my very, very favorite tools is a replacement for a tiller. And the reason I haven't been using that is because we had a tractor that we could borrow and it was very easy to just hook up the tiller and tear through an area and be ready to plant. But we don't have a tractor anymore. So it's back to hand tools. And this is a really good thing to know how to do. Today I'm gonna to show you how to till without a tiller better than a tiller can till. Some years ago, I wrote for a website called The Prepper Project. And the fellow that ran it was full of interesting questions. Like, how could you do this if you didn't have electricity? And how could you do this if the water wasn't running? And how would you do this? And how would you do this? Of course, one of the questions is, how do you prepare a garden if you don't have a team of mules or a tractor, what tools would you use? Now, I lived in a, the low-tech developing world for a period of time, and a lot of it was done with back-breaking labor, with a hand fork and a machete, just chopping and chopping and chopping or using a hoe and chopping and chopping and chopping. But when I discovered the broad fork, it's been quite a while now, I was captivated, not just because, you know, of what people often use it for, which is just aeration, but the idea of could it be used to replace a tiller? And what I discovered is, is at least in sandy soil, Yes, for those of you guys with really hard rocky clay, not as easily. I mean, the mechanical ability of a tiller is hard to beat in that circumstance. But what I found was, if I got out into my Florida backyard and I broad forked an area up, I could go through it like this, pull the grass and weeds out of it because it broke the ground underneath them, suddenly they were easier to pull. And then you just take the grass and the weeds and throw them on the driveway or a sidewalk, like this sidewalk to nowhere. Shake the dirt out of the roots, throw them out here to dry in the sun. When they've dried and died completely, I could then turn around and throw them in the compost pile. Now I know they're dead. And this worked even on Bermuda grass, works on your bunch grasses, even works on some of your sedges. Though with nut sedge, you're often to still have a few roots sticking around hiding in the ground somewhere. And I found that it was a lot faster than doing the double digging with a fork and a spade, which is what I had been doing. Double dig with a fork and a spade and work all that ground out. And there's another benefit to the broad fork that a tiller does not have. And that is that it doesn't invert all the soil layers. It doesn't take your top couple of inches of nice dark material and chew it under and shred it into the ground. 
it's not going to kill earthworms, or if it does kill earthworms, it'll only kill a few, compared to a tiller chewing it all up. It also goes to 14 inches in depth compared to a tiller, which generally does four, five, six. So if you do have a hard pan layer underneath that you've got to deal with, this will help break it up and allow organic matter and air to get down deeper into the soil. So even when during the pandemic, when we had, we had a clay loamy soil and we had a lot of area to put into production, I used the Meadow Creature Broad Fork. It's the indestructible broad fork. And I tilled up a great big area, bed by bed by bed. Had about 8,000 square foot of garden area. And we hit rocks, sometimes this big, this big, and even this big. And even though the folks at Meadow Creature say you shouldn't be using this thing to pry up boulders, I pried up a lot of boulders with it. I would start working it up and then I would stick a rock underneath and I would start working it up some more and I would stick a rock underneath until we had a multi hundred pound boulder up to the ground level and then me and the kids would roll it and lever it and push it out of the garden area. So this tool worked right through the pandemic for me when I didn't have a way to put a lot of gardens in quickly and it's not a difficult motion and I, I mean, I would not be without one now, especially with the cost of gas prices and everything going up and with a lot of parts not being available to have a way to rapidly, relatively till up the ground to a nice depth that can prepare beds for you in an afternoon. My record in one day of broad forking with a friend trading it back and forth was we did 10,000 square feet, but that was in Florida sand. It would be way, 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 way slower than that in clay. But man, it is a great tool to try and break up this material like this and get a fine bed ready with a fork and a shovel is really a pain. Broad fork is super, super easy. And the only one I will use is the metal creature because it is basically indestructible. When I recommend broad forks and people go out and they say, I bought a broad fork, but I got such and such a broad fork because the metal creature was too expensive uh, and it broke. They always break. This doesn't have wood handles. This is one huge, amazing piece of steel stuck together like this. This part's heavy duty steel welded onto this frame. It is like a rock and I have used it extensively. So I highly recommend it for a good, solid, off-grid tilling solution. Definitely get a broad fork. Highly recommend it. And this will be how we build our gardens all through here. Thanks for joining me. Catch y'all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost